What's up YouTube, it's James Q Quick from Learn, Build, Teach, and today I wanna to tell you about a new product that I just became aware of a few weeks ago called GitPod, and it's gonna add some pretty slick functionality to working with your projects in GitHub, where you can do all of your editing online. So I just wanna first off let you guys know that this is a sponsored video. So I will give an honest review of kind of playing around and exploring with the features of Gitpod. And then also just kind of give this out as information for you guys that are watching on the channel. So uh, Gitpod kind of advertises itself as a one-click online IDE for GitHub. Now, originally I was a little bit, uh, not really clear on, on what the use case for this was. And the reason is there's, there's lots of different lots of different online development environments that all kind of do similar things. There's code anywhere, there's code sandbox, there's used to be channel nine was one I used a lot. Uh, there's lots of these different online development environments that give you kind of like one click environments to get up and going with whatever project you're working on. They can do JavaScript and Ruby and Python and PHP and all these things. So with Gitpod, my initial reaction or initial thought was this is another version of an online IDE. And the thing that really jumped out to me that I think they talk about down here at some point is it's based on uh, the same kind of core, core stuff that Visual Studio Code is based on. So I'm obviously a huge Visual Studio Code person. I've got tons of videos on VS Code. I've got a course on VS Code that you guys should check out on Udemy if you haven't already. And so the idea of having uh, VS Code in a browser has always been a pretty cool idea because I love the workflow that I have on my computer, but if I go to some other machine, I don't necessarily have access to the same workflow. So having uh, the editor that they have in here be built on VS Code is definitely a plus, but I still really kind of question how this differ differentiated itself from Code Sandbox and all those other ones that I uh, talked about a few minutes or a few seconds ago. Where Gitpod really fits in, it really fits into working with GitHub, handling pull requests. Uh, somebody sends you a pull request and you can uh, run the code really quickly. And what it does is it basically lets you like take a GitHub repository or a specific branch of a repository, check it out. And in theory, it will run all the, the installs and actually start your application for you. So you don't have to install any tools on your local machine. You can go right to the browser, check out based on a GitHub URL check out a specific branch if you need to, go ahead and make those changes or check those changes online in an online IDE. Never have to worry about setting up your dev environment. So this is really about like better, enhanced, more convenient GitHub integration than it is about like a full featured cloud environment that like you do all of your development there. This is really for kind of, to me, kind of smaller scenarios where you're working with GitHub and not doing all of your development online. So let's, let's walk through a, a few of the different things here. There's three different ways that you can work with this that we'll focus on one in a second, which is using a URL prefix. So if you find whatever uh, whatever GitHub repo you wanna work with, you can prefix that link with gitpod.io slash hashtag for all the millennials out there. And then that will take you to the workspace where we'll go ahead and install tools and do everything that you need. So there's also a browser extension and then a GitHub app that you can install and use through GitHub or install in your browser and do it that way. So there's no setup. This is, uh, they kind of advertise no more like works on my machine situations. Uh, they take care of all the setup for you. They do all the installs of tools for the most part. Um, and they get things up and going so that you guys don't really have to worry about it. In theory again, and I say in theory because it didn't quite work with one of the one of the applications I looked at, Gitpod will go ahead and build your project before you even open it and then kind of have it already in a live reloading server type thing so that you can jump right into development and not have to do anything yourself. So then uh, it is based on VS Code and Linux containers. So it, it, it kind of does containers for all the different environments that you're working with. It bases everything on VS Code, which again is super cool. And it's a pretty good work environment. So there's, let's see, before I jump into one of their examples, just wanna go go over the features list here. Uh, Pre-built workspaces, so they've got workspaces to support Lots of different, uh, lots of different languages and frameworks and that kind of stuff. Built on Thea, which is the open source VS Code powered IDE. So you get that same sort of uh, awesome functionality as VS Code. Terminals, that's kind of something that you have in VS Code anyway. So you kind of get used to having that. Code reviews is actually gonna be the big one here. And this is because of the tie-in with GitHub. If you uh, look back through my videos, I did a video on a GitHub pull request extensions where for visual studio code where you can handle pull requests in vs code instead of having to go through um 
go through GitHub itself. So this is actually something that, again, ties in with VS Code or ties in with GitHub in VS Code, similar to that extension. It might actually use the extension behind the scenes. I'm not sure, but it gives you kind of that same workflow, but you can do it in the browser now, which is pretty cool. Then they've got a collaboration here, uh, live session. I'm pretty sure that would be based on or probably something similar to like VS Live Share from VS Code. Lots of different languages that it supports, all that kind of stuff. So let's, uh, I'm gonna start a JavaScript workspace. It's a React application. Actually what it is, is it's a, uh, a Next application. So uh, server-side React. Um, so what this is gonna do, you may have seen that really quick. It was creating Docker uh, containers for your environment. It's setting all that stuff up. It's going ahead and starting all of that stuff up. Now it's saying it's running. I'll give it a few more seconds here to load. Okay, so now it's up and running. Uh, what it did was it installed all the tools. It did an NPM install to get all the packages. It then did a, let's see here. It then did a, uh, a run, a yarn run of the application. If we look in the package JSON, it's running one of these tasks to go ahead and start up. Probably the, the dev right there. Yeah, node server. So it's doing a, uh, a dev server. So this should be auto reloading. If I open up one of the pages, let's say the index page, and I add something like hello in here, uh, we'll, and save it, we'll see we get an auto reloading server. It gives us a preview right here. And this is already a built a pre-built application. So now I can work with this application all in the browser and this is actually tied into GitHub. And this is again where the big, the big stuff comes into play here. So uh, right now it's telling me that I don't really have anything that I can uh, move to another branch or I don't have any changes to commit. So that's, that's a quick example of just showing like they've got these pre-built pre environments you can work with an existing repo that they give you. Now I wanna show you what it looks like to uh, work with your own repository or a repository that you work on. So this is the, the GitHub repo, it's open source, it's, it's uh, public if you guys are interested in looking at it for my Learn, Build, Teach website. And what I'm gonna do is just type in gitpod.io and then hashtag. And because of using that prefix, it's gonna go ahead and uh, do the same kind of thing. It's gonna get a copy of my code. It's gonna create a Linux or a Docker container. It will, it may or may not install the packages. It didn't on the last time I ran this. And this is gonna give me a work environment that I can go in and work with this project specifically. So let's give this another second to come up. All right, so this is up and running. For me with this project, and this is a Gatsby project, a static, uh, again, uh, React for static site, static site generator. I actually have to run an NPM install myself. Now I think they only are familiar with certain types of frameworks. So maybe they, they don't quite understand mine. I'm not really sure. So I'm gonna run an NPM, NPM install in here to get all the packages that I need. I'll let that run for a second. Okay, so I have my packages installed. Now I can do an NPM run develop, which will start Gatsby develop. And this will actually uh, do basically a live reloading server again. And it'll tell me it's running on port 3000. Now it'll tell me that it's running on, or sorry, 8000, but it's not exposed. So if I click the click expose, now this port is available. So I could open this in the browser instead. And this should actually pull up my running website uh, at a URL that I could, I could share with people if I wanted to, to be able to preview. So there's the actual uh, site running. Now I just want to take a few seconds to just kind of show you and here I've got a package lock JSON. That's the, that thing has been modified. If I look at the source control, it's going to show this thing has been modified. Let's actually change from the master branch to a new branch called test. All right, so we'll switch to that new test branch. We will do a dummy commit and add that file, the package lock JSON, and we'll go ahead and commit that. And over in the GitHub tab, it'll say this has no upstream, so we need to publish that to upstream. So we'll go ahead and publish. This is the same as just kind of your typical GitHub workflow. Now I have the ability from within this editor, from within this environment to create a pull request. And I can say dummy pull request and go ahead and do that. So I'll create a pull request. This will show up in, let's open up the uh, GitHub for learn, build, teach. Come over to pull requests. You'll see that that pull request is there. Now uh, in here, I could do a review changes. I could review these changes. I could leave a comment. I could approve. I could request further changes and submit those. So I can handle all of my pull request, pull request workflow right here in Gitpod in an online environment. 
So again, this is not this is not the kind of thing I envision myself doing all of my development in. Uh, I thought about that before with other environments and it just doesn't quite work as well as you might think sometimes. Some of the shortcuts especially don't work. Uh, things like command uh, command R is gonna be a refresh like in the browser just just for Chrome and other browsers. Uh, so some of your uh, some of your shortcuts don't work, which takes a lot away from my workflow. But uh, things like handling uh, pull requests, things like adding small changes on the fly if you have to, things like that where you can make them really quick, you can add comments, you can approve things, you can take care of that stuff right here inside of Gitpod, which I think is pretty sweet. So understand this is not like this is not like a replacement for your entire workflow or your entire uh, workspace. This is the ability to really quickly on the fly check out a project, get all your things installed, make a change if you have to, look at a change, approve it, whatever it is to handle that kind of workflow, uh, but not your entire development workflow. So I think it's pretty cool. I'd recommend that you guys at least uh, take take a look at this and see if it would fit into and improve the workflow that you have for handling these types of situations. So I'm curious, uh, has anyone out there checked out Gitpod yet? Anyone have any feedback? Has it gone well? Has it helped you? Really curious to see what you guys think. As I work with this more in the future, maybe I'll come back and do a circle video to kind of share with you uh, some more learning experiences that I have from working with it. So that's going to do it for this video. Just want to thank you guys for checking out. I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.